Hello, and today I'm going to show you how to turn on your clock. This is what these clocks physically look like, these silver ovals on the surface of the board. We're going to first start by looking at the data sheet, a link for which is provided in the description. The first page you'll want to find will be the memory map page. This page is very important, as it gives you a map of all of the functions of the board and what memory locations you need in order to control them. The memory location we're interested in today is the RCC block. This block controls the clocks on the board. You can't do anything else if you don't have your clocks on. Our RCC block starts at the 4002, 1000 and goes all the way up to 4002, 13 FF. Just click on the link provided on the right hand side next to the RCC block and you'll be taken to the appropriate section of the manual. When you click the link, you'll end up on a page like this. This is the end of the RCC section and you need to scroll up until you reach a section that looks like this. The control register you are looking for is the RCC APB 2 ENR register. This register allows you to turn on and off the clocks of the GPIO pins, and these pins are used to interact with the physical world, so these are very important. Please note, at the top of each section you will see a 0x and then a number. This number is the end part of the memory address. The zeros at the bottom of the screen indicate all the positions you are able to write ones or zeros to, and each of these ones and zeros controls which clock you are turning on or off. We want to turn on the IOPAEN or input output pin A enable on. In order to do this, we write a 1 into the third position. This tells the board that we want whatever is in this position to be on. Below this register map is listed all of the register bits and what each of them does. So now let's take a look at the code. The code I'm using is one from a previous tutorial video. The only things that I've changed are the ones I'll highlight here. The first change I've made is to add an equate at the top of the program. Setting RCC APB to ENR equal to its memory location. This is necessary for each register that you use, as it sets the reference of that memory location and also allows you to keep a tidy program. The next thing that I've changed is I've added a proc next to the reset handler. What a proc does is it divides the program into sections, similar to functions, and it allows you to branch back to specific parts of the program. I've done it here so I can distinguish between the initializations at the top of the program and the main program itself. The next part that I've changed is I've added the label of clock init below reset handler. This is an organizational thing and does not affect the program at all unless you reference it inside your own program. I've added a very important section of code which you can reuse for all of your register initializations. The first line of this code loads the memory address of the RCC APB 2 ENR register into the R6 register inside the processor. This essentially prepares the processor and tells it where we want to write our next value. Next, we write a hexadecimal 4 into the register R0 using the same load register command. What this function does is it writes a 1 into the third position of the register. This turns on the A GPIO pin clocks and prepares them for use. The next function stores the value in R0, currently a hexadecimal 4, into the memory location stored in R6, which is the RCC APB2 ENR register memory location. It is important to note that the brackets around R6 in the store register function mean that you should be writing to the value stored inside R6 and not to the register itself. If you are familiar with other programming concepts, this would be considered a pointer, as it does not actually contain the space that you are writing to but only a designation of where you want to write to. The final changes I have made to this program are to add an end P to the end of this proc and to add a proc and a main label to the top of the previous main program. There is also an end P just before the end label at the end of the main program as well, as each proc designation must have an end P label to go with it. And that's how to control your clocks.